In this video, we describe how to perform solubility calculations. All right, so let's think about an insoluble salt, AD, whose aqueous equilibrium would be like this. A plus aqueous, and then B minus aqueous. And then all of this is governed by an equilibrium constant, which we call the solubility product, which is simply going to be the uh, product of the concentration of the ions. All right, great. So now we can define uh, how soluble this uh, solid is, AB, by defining the solubility. So the definition of solubility is simply the number of moles of a uh, solid that dissolve per liter uh, of solution. All right, so uh, obviously it's going to be very difficult to track what those moles of solid uh, uh, dissolve per liter of solution are by looking at the solid itself, right? Uh, you would have to think about changes in mass in the solid and so forth, but that is hard to do. However, uh, what we can do is always uh, figure out how much of the solid has dissolved by looking at the uh, concentration of ions that you have in solution, right? Uh, in this particular case, the stoichiometry is pretty straightforward. You have that, well, if you find one mole of A plus or one mole of B minus uh, in solution, then that would, that would mean that one mole of AB has dissolved. Okay, so uh, let's do a couple of examples uh, to figure out how this works numerically. All right, so let's think about the uh, copper sulfide uh, equilibrium, which is this. Copper sulfide is a uh, sparingly soluble salt, which uh, has the following equilibrium, copper to plus, aqueous plus sulfide to minus, aqueous. And then the solubility product has a value of um, 8.5, 10 to the minus 45. All right, so that already indicates that this is a very insoluble salt. All right, so the question is, well, with this data, uh, what would be the solubility of copper sulfide? All right, so the way that you uh, think about this is as follows. You notice that uh, the, stoichiometry, the stoichiometry is tell, telling you that uh, for every mole of copper that you find in solution, uh, one mole of copper sulfide has dissolved, and the same thing happens for sulfide. Okay, so notice that the concentration of copper sulfide and the concentration of sulfide in solution, that is going to be exactly the solubility of the salt. Okay, yes, because the stoichiometry is one uh, for each with respect to the solid. Right, so well, these uh, are the concentrations of the ions in solution, but that is exactly what is uh, coded by the sol solubility product. Okay, so we can say that the definition of the solubility product is simply the equilibrium constant of this process, but that is just the concentration of the ions, the product of the concentration of the ions, divided by the activity of the salt, which is one. So this is simply uh, copper 2 plus multiplied by S2 minus at equilibrium. Okay, so well, uh, when we now code this in terms of solubility, again, because uh, the solubil solubility of the salt is uh, the concentrations of the ions in solution, this is simply going to be equal to x multiplied by x, or x squared, okay? So, uh, this is equal to 8.5 10 to the minus 45, which then allows us to uh, calculate quantitatively uh, what the solubility of the salt is. Uh, so when you take the square root of that number, you find that this is equal to 9.2 10 to the minus 23 molar Okay, so that is the solubility of uh, copper sulfide. And again, notice that the strategy here is to always uh, try to find out what, uh, how many of the ions that have emerged from the salt, uh, what is that concentration, because that is related to the solubility. This is the simplest case in which the concentration of the ions uh, uh, and the solubility of the salt is the same because the stoichiometric coefficients uh, of the salt and the ions are all one. Okay, but there are cases that will be a little bit more complicated. So for example, let's move on to uh, a different example in which the stoichiometry is not as trivial to see how to proceed. All right, so with, uh, let's look at uh, silver sulfide instead. So silver sulfide is this uh, insoluble salt. Okay, so then um, the equilibrium will be two silver ions plus sulfide. And again, uh, 
uh, now they agree on constant, that solubility product will be a little different. This value is 1.6, 10 to the minus 49. Okay. And then the question is, well, what is the solubility of this salt, of this insoluble solid? Well, uh, so notice that for every mole of uh, silver sulfide that dissolves, we will be generating uh, x moles of sulfide. Okay, so then this is actually the solubility as well, right? The concentration of sulfide ions in mole per liter will be exactly the same thing as the solubility of uh, this salt, because the stoichiometric coefficient is the same here and there. But then for silver, this will be a little different, right? Notice that uh, uh, you will have twice as many silver ions in solution as you have uh, molecules of silver, and sul silver sulfide dissolved. Okay, so that will be uh, 2x. Right, so then we're ready to try to figure out uh, how to solve this problem, right? The solubility product would be uh, now the concentration of silver plus squared, and this is important, notice that the powers of those concentrations are the stoichiometric, stoichiometric coefficients times the concentration of sulfide, okay? And that has to be equal to the value of 1.6 10 to the minus 49. Now, when we code this in terms of solubility, Again, we're seeing that uh, that will be exactly x, but then silver will be 2x squared, right? So this is going to be equal to 4x cubed, okay? And that is equal to 1.6, 10 to the minus 49, uh, which means that the solubility of the salt in this particular case is 3.4, 10 to the minus 17 more. Okay, so this video has uh, introduced the concept of solubility and then we have learned how to calculate the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt by just looking at the concentrations of ions in solutions uh, that come from the solubility product.